Sophia Loren, beautiful, romantic, and brutally honest. When she was 14, her mother entered her into the Queen of the Sea in her 12 Princesses Beauty Contest. Lorraine wore a dress that her grandmother had sewn from the pink curtains in the living room. Despite her humble appearance, she was selected as one of the 12 princesses, winning rolls of wallpaper, $35, and a ticket to Rome. The 86-year-old Oscar winner and star of Two Women and it started in Naples, is back on screen after a 10-year hiatus in the new film, The Life Ahead. But don't let her comeback roll as an ailing local nanny fool you. Loren's 70-year career in cinema has been one of glamour, sexy relationships with smoldering stars, a brush with the law, and decades old beefs that are still gossiped about. The Italian actress is still such a Spitfire that when asked about Marlon Brando, she shrugged and said, eh, despite her reputation as a stunner, though the gorgeous star got her start like Judy Garland before her, by being told she wasn't pretty enough for showbiz. That slight came from none other than her future husband. At 17 years old, Loren met her famed Italian producer, Carlo Ponti, when she was 22 years her senior. At 17 years old, Loren met the famed Italian producer, Carlo Ponti, who was 22 years her senior. During a pageant, he was judging in 1951. The pair got off to a rocky start while she was doing a screen test for him. A cameraman shouted, She's impossible to photograph. Her face is too short. Her mouth is too big. Her nose is too long. Rather than siding with his eventual wife, whom he wed in 1957, Ponzi poured gasoline. Sophia, have you ever thought about, you know, softening your dominant profile? Loren recalled him saying in her 20... 14 memoir, Yesterday, Today, Tomorrow, My Life. The teenage actress was irate at what was being implied. Carlo, if you're suggesting that in order to make movies, I'm going to have to slice a piece of my nose, well then I'm going back to Patsuli because I have no intention of getting a nose job, she said. Lorraine claims she has never gone under the knife. And why would she? Her looks were good enough for Cary Grant, after all. The English-American actor who starred in his Girl Friday and Alfred Hitchcock's To Catch a Thief, among countless others, was cast in the 1957 film The Pride and the Passion, alongside Lorraine and Frank Sinatra. The trio first met during a cocktail party at the Castellana Hotel in Madrid. The dashing Grant approached the Lorraine wearing a tux and said, Miss Lorraine, I presume, or is it Miss Laringindia? You Italians have such strange last names. I can't seem to get them straight. Forgetting the flub, the two began regularly eating dinner together and driving around Spain in his red MG, becoming more and more emotionally entwined. This was no innocent courtship. She was 22, he was 52. Lorraine was about to wed Ponty, and Grant was already married to his third wife, Betsy Drake. Regardless, Lorraine was torn between two men and two worlds. And on the last night of filming, she writes that over dinner, Grant dropped a bomb. Will you marry me? He asked. In April 1957, Lorraine took her first trip to America who she would that September. She was greeted in grand fashion by a sea of photographers and dominated the headlines. Lorraine married Ponti in 1957, but the Vatican and Italian law did not recognize her divorce by proxy from Giuliana Ponti. After her and Ponti's run-in with the Italian law regarding marriage, they were essentially exiled from the country. Lorraine missed Italy so much that Ponti would drive her to the top of St. Gothard Pass in Switzerland so she could just get a glimpse of her homeland. 
Despite the love triangle between Lorraine, Grant, and Ponty, Lorraine and Ponty's marriage would stood the test of time, and they were married until Ponty's death in 2007. Thank you for watching. Please continue enjoying the photos and subscribe. Fun Facts Library. Thank you.